This video explains how to store the parameters of a user-defined function as a list in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you an example. And for this example, we first need to create a user-defined list, as you can see in lines 2 to 6 of the code. So after running these lines of code, you can see at the top right that a new function called myFun1 is appearing. And we can apply this function to a certain input value, as you can see in line 8 of the code. So after running this line of code, you can see that at the bottom in the RStudio console, a new output is returned, which shows the value 15. And this is actually the output of our function. However, at this point, we have not stored the parameters that we have inserted when we have applied our function. And to do that, we have to modify our user-defined function, as you can see in lines 10 to 16 of the code. So in line 10 and in lines 14 to 16, I'm using the same syntax as in lines 2 to 6. However, in our modified function, I'm also specifying a new data object called my parameters. And this new data object should contain all the parameters that I have inserted in my user-defined function. And it's important to use this double arrow sign because this will store the values of my parameters also outside of the user-defined function. So after running lines 10 to 16 of the code, this user-defined function is also appearing at the top right of our studio. And then in the next step, we can apply our modified user-defined function to the same input as in the previous example. So after running line 18 of the code, the same value. So in this case, the value 15 is returned. However, you can also see that we have created a data object called my parameters by executing this function. So by running line 20 of the code, you can see that all the input values that we have inserted in our user-defined function are shown as a list at the bottom in the RStudio console. And as you can see, the first input is equal to 10. So this is the input that we have specified within the user-defined function. And then if you go back to the function creation, you can see that we have specified a default value for the input number 2, which is equal to 5. So for that reason, those two outputs are shown at the bottom in the RStudio console. It's also possible to use this function to store multiple parameters, as you can see in lines 22 to 24 of the code. So in this case, I'm specifying again the value 10 for the first input parameter, the value 20 this time for the second input parameter, and I'm specifying the character string xxx for a parameter that I'm calling input 3. So after running lines 22 to 24 of the code, another output of our function is returned. However, the more important part is that also the data object my parameters is updated, as you can see by printing the data object. And then you can see that this time the data object my parameters is a list with three list elements. And you can see that these three list elements contain the input values that we have inserted in our function. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.